بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا لا تزه قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, My dear children, my dear sisters Welcome back to uh, the second lecture about the kinship ties How to keep the good kinship ties And we started last time with the bir al-walidayn Or being dutiful to your parents So um, actually we had homework last time uh, About um, how you will treat uh, the, the new thing That you were going to do to your parents and before proceeding today to uh, today's lecture, we want to ask our uh, participants, uh, those who can help us from our sons, my sons and my daughters, to tell me uh, who kissed his parents or her parents' hand last time or last week or from this the week that we took. Anyone who kissed his parents' hand to raise her or his hand, please? Hmm. Who kissed the hand of mother or father last time, as we mentioned? Who will raise her or his hand? Hmm. Uh, we have Alia, we have Karm and Lily. Uh, Ali and Amr, I think. Who kissed? Who kissed the parents? No, no kissing? Oh, yeah, this is, we have Karma and Lily, excellent. Excellent, Karma and Lily and Yahya kissed the uh, hands of mother or father or both. Mm. Uh, excellent, Alia. Alia, she said, I give my mom a hug, but you have to kiss her also. Excellent, um, Karma and Lily and Yahya, they, okay. Kezaya, I held my dad's hand and told him I love him. Excellent. Excellent, Kezaya. May Allah bless you. Who else? Alia and kiss my mama. Excellent. Excellent. So who else? We have Ziad. We have Omar. We have... Um, who else? We have Ali and uh, Amr. No one kissed mama hand or baba hand last week or did good thing to them? Any good thing? Yes, yes, excellent. I kissed my mom, excellent. Okay, what, who else? Who else kissed mama or baba or hugged him or hair or brought something good or did something good for parents? Just to give him a clap. Hmm. Who else? Okay, I wish that next time, inshallah, we have a lot of participants from my uh, daughters and sons tell me that they did do good things to mama and baba please i just want more uh kissing and hugging to my parents okay right now we're going to start our uh, lesson today remember our last lesson we talked about how to be dutiful to your parents and how it, what are the benefits of that uh, coming from the rights uh, of parents in the in the Sunnah and in the Quran, and uh, many ayat and uh, many hadith from the Prophet والسلام, is insisting and is uh, persuading us to uh, be dutiful to our parents. Uh, here, when we come to the uh, religious or the Islamic law regarding uh, the parents and their rights, we will find that. The right of parents takes precedence over the rights of other human beings. And uh, the right of the mother precedes the right of the father. As we mentioned in the hadith last time, that when the companion came to the Prophet والسلام, and he told him, who is the person that I uh, يعني, obliged or I have to be with him or accompanying him, uh, three times he told him, your mother, your mother, your mother. And in the fourth time, he told him your father. So we can see the right of the mother here. 
uh, also carrying out the rights of parents takes the precedence over um, the voluntary prayers. Yani if your mother wants something from you and you are in your voluntary prayers, which means you finish the obligatory one, you finish the Fajr or uh, Asr or Dhuhr or Isha, and after that you want to, to pray extra prayers. If at that time your mama calls you, you have to immediately reply to her. You have to immediately. So anytime mama or baba is calling you, you have to immediately reply to them. And except if you are doing your voluntary prayer uh, or your obligatory prayer. If you are doing your obligatory prayer, you can't, of course, uh, stop the prayer. You have to finish it first and then respond to them. But if you are doing extra prayers or you're doing anything else, even reading Quran, even anything, and mama or baba is calling immediately, you have to go and to reply to them immediately. Also, for the son, it's obligatory for the son who is able to spend on the parents uh, if they need that. It is permissible for the father or the mother to take from uh, his or her son's money under the following condition if it is not harmful to the son and if the uh, parents is uh, really in need of that, in need of uh, the son or uh, of the money of the son or not excessively. Uh, this is very important that the parents is responsibility of the son that if they really in need of his help or uh, if it is something that he can uh, do for them uh, and it's not harming him. So this is very important to know that also this is from the responsibilities towards our parents that if they need help and if they need to spend on them, this is our duty and our uh, yani their right on us to do that. Also, it is obligatory to be kind, to be kind to them, even if they are evildoers or disbelievers. Imagine, yani here our religion is telling us, if your mother or your father is not Muslim, also you have to be dutiful to them. You have to treat them kindly. And this is come in, uh, in the Quran, Surah Luqman. Allah SWT is saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَإِن جَاهَدَكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا وَاتَّبِعْ سَبِيلَ مَنْ أَنَابَ إِلَيَّ ثُمَّ إِلَيَّ مَرْجِعُكُمْ فَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ الله سبحانه وتعالى in this ayah is saying if they if uh, but if they pressure you to associate with me what you have no knowledge of don't obey them this is only the aspect that no obeying for the parents if they are disbelievers and want their son or daughter to take them to their direction so you will not obey but still still keep their company in this world courteously and follow the way of those uh, who turn to me in devotion then to me you will all return and then I will inform you of what you used to do Allah is saying that that all of you will return and uh, is um, ordering that uh, those who have disbelievers parents even to treat them kindly and uh, this is very important because actually treating them kindly it, it could be a way of da'wah a way of invitation that they will enter Islam after that when they uh, see that uh, their son or their daughter, although that they are uh, Muslims and not on the same religion, but still they are treating them kindly. So this is very important and uh, something which makes them may think why we become Muslim like our children. Now we're going to take the second part of how to be uh, rights of parents is the avoidance of ingratitude towards them. So when we spoke about rights of parents, we mentioned the first thing is to be dutiful to them. 
This is the second uh, uh, division of rights of parents is to avoid their ingratitude. Because actually, you will, as we mentioned, that we will have a lot of benefits from being dutiful to them. So a lot of sins will be upon you if you're going to be in gratitude to your parents. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, should I not inform you about the gravest of the major sin, the gravest sin associating anyone with Allah, this is number one, and number two, disobedience to parents, and number three, saying falsehood or saying something which is not true, or lying. So this is from the gravest major sins. The gravest major sins. Uh, number one, associating with Allah, uh, another uh, God, or disobedience, number two, disobedience to parents, and uh, thirdly, saying falsehood. falsehood. Okay, so we can see here disobedience to parents is coming from the gravest major sins that can happen or can be committed. When we speak about ingratitude, ingratitude could be either in word speaking to them or action. So how could be the word and how could be the action? Ingratitude in words, including cursing them or causing insult to them. The hadith where the Prophet ﷺ is saying that a man's reviling of his parents or uh, is one of the grave sins, means cursing, cursing his parents. Then he was asked, Messenger of Allah, how does a man to curse or insult his parents? He replied uh, that uh, the man is cursing the father of another man who then will curse his father. For example, the two, two men are talking together and one of them is saying, uh, uh, curse on your mother, for example. So the other one will reply, no, curse on your mother. So both of them, they brought curse and insult and bad words to their mothers or to their father. So it's very grave sins. And uh, as uh, yani mentioned by the Prophet, this is very bad to happen that uh, one will revile uh, the, uh, yani father of another one and the other one or the other man will reply by the same way. And so this both of them, they brought the curse and the insulting to their parents, either the mother or the father. And this is of the gravest sin by word we still by word how to uh, be in gratitude to your parents by word here here the ayah in surah al-isra allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim wa qada rabbuka alla ta'budu illa iyyahu wa bil walidayni ihsana إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍّ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا For your Lord has decreed that you worship none but him and honor your parents. If one or both of them reach old age in your care, Never say to them even oof, nor yell at them, rather address them respectfully. So here we can see that if you, raising the voice is a much higher than saying oof. If you just say oof, this will be sins. The increasing sins on yourself. So imagine if you're going to yell, <coughs> yell to, your, to your parents or to raise your voice on them, how it could be a lot of sins you will have and considered to be from the ingratitude. So we have to take care about raising our voice on our parents. Now we'll come to the actions. How the actions, what I do by my hand, 
how I do by uh, my movements, all this moving, how I will be like that actions, looking at them sharply or angrily. This is, could be from the ingratitude. Uh, preferring others over them. This is uh, also from the ingratitude that some uh, that one of the uh, children come and tell his mother, uh, you see, uh, this, um, uh, this lady is better than you. She's doing so and so and you are not doing, she's doing like that for her uh, sons or for her children, but you are not doing uh, you are not like her and start to talk in an irrespective way. If you are seeing that something is about your uh, parents' behavior is not right, you never speak to them in such tone or in such manner. But there is a way of speaking. We, we mentioned before the kind words. We have to start with the kind words. Uh, for example, that if sometimes one of the parents a little bit nervous or shouting or so much and the children are finding this is all the time too much on them. So you can come while your mother is quiet, while she's taking her five o'clock or six o'clock tea and just uh, sit with her. Mama, how are you? How is everything today? As we mentioned last time, tell her about herself. How the day with you? How what happened when we were at school and tell me about and then at the end of the conversation you can tell her mama please if you want anything from us please don't shout please try to uh, talk to us so we can we will obey you will do everything you want like that this is the way to talk to your mother or father if there is something you want to uh, advise or to uh, to to think to to tell them about. But don't come to shout and say, you, you you cannot do that. Look at this lady, how she's uh, uh, treating her children. You must be like her. You must like, uh, and I brought for you this picture just to see how this little boy is opening his mouth so much, shouting to his mother, which is very bad. And even he's trying to beat her or kick her. You can see his hand is uh, moving. Taban, all this uh, disrespecting and underestimating and even trying to beating her, this is the worst, worst of the worst. Never do that, never do that to beat uh, your parents, especially if they grow older and you are still young and have uh, power. Whatever happened, whatever happened, whatever the things are going to tell you, whatever bad things you think that it is the worst thing to be mentioned to you, never do that. Because actually, as we mentioned, it is from the gravest sin to be uh, ingrateful or ungrateful to your parents. So as I mentioned, if you have something you have yani, towards your parents, you have to make it in a nice way and to choose the best time and try to speak kindly first. At the end of the conversation, you will just give your comment about the thing you want to mention about the way of uh, treating how ma how mama or how baba is treating you this is very important and believe me if you do this um many things will be changed and it will the things will go better inshallah as we mentioned about the benefits of being dutiful to parents now we're going to say dangerous of ingratitude towards parents. What are the dangerous things that may happen due to ingratitude towards parents? Number one, disgrace and shame in this world and torment in the hereafter. Abu Huraira said, one of the companion reported that the Prophet ﷺ said, may he be disgraced, may he be disgraced May he be disgraced. Three times the Prophet mentioned about someone who will be disgraced, whose parents, one or both, attain old age during his lifetime and he doesn't enter Jannah. He mentioned that he will be loser, who will be disgraceful, that 
he will have one of his parents during their old age alive with him and they by being dutiful to them he couldn't be dutiful to them or take hasanat or take their dua or good deeds from them because he didn't enter the jannah so uh, which give us the uh, conclusion that he was not good to his parents that's why he doesn't enter the jannah this one the prophet mentioned about him that he will be the disgraced and be loser that he will uh, enter uh, not enter the jannah means that he will be punished in the hellfire of course number two god's wrath allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the anger and the wrath and uh, display uh, this displeasure on the disobedient to his parents remember that we mentioned in the benefits of the one who is dutiful to his parents that from its benefits that Allah pleasure. If you want Allah to be pleased with you, make your parents pleased, make them smile. So this is the reverse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrath and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anger and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse will be on that who will displease his parents. Uh, in the hadith also, uh, the Prophet wa sallam, mentioned Allah pleasure result from the parents pleasure and Allah displeasure results from the parents displeasure so if you want to be Allah displeased with you so you are the one to choose I uh, number three also from the dangers of ingratitude towards parents is deprivation of God's sight on the day of resurrection and entry into heaven it was narrated that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned there are three at whom Allah will not look to them on the day of resurrection. And one of them was one who disobey his parents. The one who disobey his parents, Allah will not look at him. And when we say Allah will not look at him, he will be uh, ignored. He will be ignored at that day where that day all of us will be in need of Allah pleasure uh, on us in order to let us enter the Jannah. Number four, from the dangerous of ingratitude towards parents is a form of cutting the ties of kinship, which leads to the descent of punishment and affliction. Uh, the parents is considered uh, one of the kinship, and when you cut these ties, there is a specific also type of punishment will be fall on the people who are cutting their kinship ties. And this is mentioned in the hadith by the Prophet ﷺ. He mentioned there is no sin more deserving that Allah hastened the, hasten the punishment in this world in addition to what it stored up for him in the hereafter than injustice and severing the ties of kinship or cutting the ties of kinship. So here the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that from the sins or grave sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make for it two punishment, one in the life and one in the hereafter. The injustice the one who is wrongdoers to others and transgressing others. And the second is those who are cutting their kinship ties. They will be punished in their life and also will be punished when they will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So all these things make it very dangerous and uh, will not have uh, the pleasure of Allah and will be many things, grave things will be upon us, ha will happen if we are going to be in gratitude to our parents. And we mentioned that ingratitude to our parents is by word and by actions. Now I want to ask you, after what we mentioned now, what, uh, what things you will never do if you tell me now after we, we mentioned the dangerous and how to be in gratitude to your parents. What are the things you will never do to your parents? 
Can you write it, please? Write it down, Ya Amr and Ali. Can you write it down on the chat room? What things you will never do to Mama or Baba? Huh. Write down, please, on the chat room. Just to read your answer. Uh, Yahya, never hurt your parents. Excellent. Excellent. Never hurt your parents. This is very good. And Kezaya, compare my parents to someone else and say they are better. Excellent, Kezaya. Excellent. Never to tell them that. Uh, even if, if, it was, if it was right, you, you never tell them that in front of them. And as I mentioned, you will choose the good time and better time and try to advise them kindly and nicely. Um, we have also... Uh, Lily, we have Amr and Ali. <laughs> hit them, yell at them, yes, never do that. We have Lily, don't hurt their feelings, excellent, yeah, Lily. Alia, don't shout at them, excellent. Amr and Ali, don't curse, yes, don't curse at them by trying to, to, uh, to uh, make that with your friends, for example, and your friends will reply to you. So uh you, both of you will curse their parents which is very bad very bad things to be happened okay excellent very good so this is to be remembered all the time and uh we'll stop here and inshallah we'll continue next time about other things related to the other relatives now we finished with the parents inshallah next time we'll continue with other relatives and we'll know who are our other relatives and what their rights on us and how uh, the way we should or we must treat them. Jazakumullah khairan wa